the only thing that's wrong with this car is the engine which is exactly why I went for one Hi guys, welcome to another episode. This is the AMG Lounge. I'm G and this is my brand new company car. Well, not so new anymore because I've done nearly 7,000 miles in it now, but it is the new E220 AMG Lounge Premium Plus Night Edition Coupe. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about what's new, what's changed, and just exactly what you get for your money. Let's go. The E-Class or the E-Class family has been one of the best sellers at Mercedes-Benz for a very long time. And for good reason, the E-Class is available in a saloon, an estate, a coupe, and the cabriolet. So there is something for everyone. It's a great blend of comfort, looks, and size. This is now my fourth, maybe fifth E-Class that I've had. And I had an E53 AMG somewhere in between as well. And I absolutely loved it. It had everything and it could do everything you asked it to do. It was practical, it was fast, it was quick, it sounded great, you had all the luxuries that you could ever ask for in, in, in a car. And not that AMG drivers necessarily care, but it was actually really good on fuel. Not quite as good as this, but great nonetheless. There's a uh, learner driver about to uh, embark on a busy junction, so we might be here for a while. So while we are, let's talk about the interior. Let's start off with the all new steering wheel, which is available in all the E classes, as well as the S class. And having done over now 6,000 miles in this car, I finally have an opinion on it. It's grown on me in terms of ergonomics. It's a lovely feel. It's made of soft leather. It's chunky. It's very comfortable to use. However, the touch controls, I don't think work as nicely or as intuitively as physical buttons that we had on the pre-face lift. I mean, they do operate as physical buttons as well, but take the volume, for example, it's sort of touch sensitive and you have to kind of swipe upwards or downwards when you want to adjust the volume. And I think it, the cradle, which is down here, was available on the steering wheel on the pre-face lift. And I just found that a little bit easier to use, especially when you're driving, it'd be nice to have some sort of tactile feedback because you, you know, you have to kind of look down at the screen and see if it's actually doing anything other than hearing the music as well. Um, and because it's got the sort of concave design, the buttons on the inner part of the steering wheel are a bit further to reach. So if like me, you've got medium sized hands, it, it makes it a little bit difficult to kind of reach. You kind of have to stretch your thumb inwards to reach like the home buttons and the cruise control and the favorite button down here other than that i think it looks great and it's very comfortable and um, it feels very very premium i mean it has to the same steering wheel is in the s-class you do have mbux which means that you can summon her and ask her to do various different things for you the screen just here is also for the first time touch screen you can use that or you have this sort of trackpad that's down here and this is probably my favorite one out of the whole variety of options that Mercedes offered in the past because it feels like an actual mouse pad. It's very tactile, there's feedback. You can press it as a button or you can make it sort of touch sensitive. You just tap it if you want to go into a menu. Um, and I think between the controls on the steering wheel, the touch screen and the touchpad and voice command, you're pretty much catered for in that respect. I just so happen to use the touchpad because it's very responsive all the commands are there but more importantly if like me you have OCD and you have problems with fingerprints then you're not going to want to use a touchscreen I mean I'm serious look even check my phone 
I've got this matte screen cover. Doesn't leave fingerprint, huh? How cool is that? If you want one of these for your iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max, I will leave a link to the eBay page down below in the comment section or the description box. If you want to order one, hit it up. Before I forget guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would really help us out and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and I will do my best to respond to all of them. If you have any questions about the car, any future models, anything at all, or even if you just want to say hello. Both the screens, both the one on, in front of the driver and the, the multimedia screen here, they are very, very crisp. The information's really easy to see or you've got access to everything about the car, music, navigation, engine data, customization, and it is very customizable. Indeed, the screen in front, you've got two, three different um, themes that you can adjust it with different sort of color combinations and then you've got your left dial your center screen and then your right dial and you can customize those as well to so you can just see whatever you want now spec wise this is what most people would refer to as the all sing and all dancing in that it's the premium plus night edition formally you could have a premium premium plus or premium with a night pack or a premium plus with a night pack but they've kind of streamlined all the specs so when you opt for the premium plus you get the night pack with it so it's called the AMG line premium plus night edition which in short means that all the options that you can have on one of these you get in the premium plus albeit one option which is the driving assistance pack. Driving assistance pack is the only standalone option other than that you just pick the engine that you want the color and the leather and away you go now the benefit of that is that if you're in the used car market and you're searching around for your car it makes it very simple for you to know exactly what the car has you don't have to worry about oh that one looks like good spec but does it have this and then you search around and you google it and you look around for it and you, you know you, if you want to take the anxiety away from not missing out on a spec just know that if it's got a premium plus it has everything and if driving assistance pack is important to you then that's pretty much the only option that you've got to look out for i got hay fever hay fever oh, god imagine it i'm allergic to flowers and plants but the good thing about this is i've got the air balance pack as part of set premium plus package and it ionizes the air which I think means it cleans it before it lets it into the cabin and then you can um, pick different fresheners perfumes if you like into the glove box just there and it lets out a very subtle smell which is lovely lovely so what does the premium plus actually consist of well Mr. Surround sound system, the panoramic glass sunroof, air balance package, electric seats with a memory function, the blind spot assist, keyless entry, keyless go, powered boot, upgraded wheels, multi beam LEDs, leather seats, night package, folding mirrors, 360 camera, heated seats, ambient lighting, 64 different colours, sensors all around the car, collision prevention assist, speed limit assist, augmented reality navigation, traffic light assist, cruise control, Bluetooth, climate control. You've got three different USB type C ports. You've got two in here with lots of room and you've also got one here just by your oh, wireless charger. That's another one to name well all of them and the facelift e-coupe gets the all new mbux system from mercedes-benz which means that when you're stuck in traffic you can have a conversation with her hey mercedes how can i help what do you think of bmw the same as you do otherwise we would not be sitting here Let's talk a little bit about design. The 
design wise you could be forgiven for thinking that it's a brand new car at least from the front anyway the headlights have been completely reshaped from the pre-facelift model it's got a brand new grille now the bonnet and the bumpers the basically the same but because the headlights are completely reshaped and as is the grille it makes it look like a completely different car from the back it pretty much remains unchanged the only difference being that inside the rear light clusters they've gone away with the the stardust sort of finish and replaced it with the led strips which kind of makes it look a little bit more modern i think oh belt butler you get a belt butler as well we have to remember that this car has been around since 2017 four years on and i think it still looks great and these new small and subtle changes have actually brought it very much up to date the touch screen you know that's sort of a given like that had to be done and that's done new software new operating system I hate mercedes much better control unit down here and everything's been I wouldn't say perfected, but this is the best version of the E-Coupe now. You know, they, it was launched in 2017 and now it's had a facelift. So all the niggly, you know, teething problems and that out of the way, it's all been lined out. And you have the best version of the E-Coupe now in this. Blind spot assist. It's got blind spot assist as well to let you know that there's someone there. And if you indicate while the light's on, it flashes, and then the computer here shouts at you with three loud beeps. And as well, when once you've parked up, switch the engine off, and you open your door and there's an oncoming car, it'll do the same, it'll shout at you. Say, so don't swing your door open. Let cars pass, and then you can get out safely. Now, the engine. At the start of the video, I mentioned that it was one of the things that I least liked about the car but at the same time it was the reason why I went for it and the reason for that is because it's hugely economical I've in the six and a half seven thousand miles that I've done in the car I've averaged over 50 miles to the gallon that's averaged 50 miles to the gallon which means that at times I've achieved over 60 miles to the gallon i.e. on the motorway but as well at, at other times I've done 40 miles to the gallon when I'm in town or in the city. Now that's more than what I averaged in a DGLA plug-in hybrid that I had a few months ago as well as the E300E which is the petrol plug-in hybrid E-Class Saloon. So if you've got a 2 litre diesel engine that gives you more or even the same consumption as a plug-in hybrid petrol then is diesel dead? Not from where I'm sitting. So this is the E220D, which means that it's got a two litre, four cylinder turbocharged diesel engine, developing just under 200 brake horsepower. I think it's like 197, which is a good amount. 200 brake horsepower is a decent amount, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's a lot of car. So it's not the most exciting engine. Now I can live with that because of the reasons that I went for this car. As someone who does 2,000 miles a month, it's very important for me that I get maximum mileage for the money. That right there, that, that's my predicament because I want all the economy that E220 gives me, but I also want a little bit more power. I guess now more than ever, I understand just what it means to want your cake and to eat it too. The one thing of the cake is the economy. Eating the cake is the power. When it comes to engines, there is a nice variety of petrol and diesel engines to choose from. This being the E220D is the entry level engine. If you want a little bit more power, you can go for the 300D, which is a Formatic and that produces 265 brake horsepower. You can go for a 400D, which is a three litre six cylinder diesel engine, also in Formatic and that produces 330 brake horsepower. In terms of petrol engines, the E300 produces 245 brake horsepower. If you want a little bit more power, but not quite ready for the AMG version, there is a E450, which is a three litre six cylinder petrol engine, and that produces 367 horsepower. And if you do want the 
chart topping version of this car it is the E53 AMG which is circa 450 brake horsepower to all four wheels. The E Coupe is also a very practical car. The boot, it's huge. Yeah, not too shabby at all. At the back, it is a strictly two by two, so you can't put three people in the back, only two. But the seats do fold forward as well, so if you do need to get any larger items, you can. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed the video. This was the E-Class Coupe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Welcome to another episode. This is the AMG Lounge. I'm Ju, and the, I'm Ju. No offense, anyone? I'm Ju.